Yo, what is up, my dudes? Max here from Whipped Cream Media, and today we're gonna do some f***ed up math in the form of in-game stats. And we'll also get to learn what stats we should prioritize depending on your desired characters, or dare I say, characters that you never really wanted, but your gacha tells you otherwise, and now you don't have a choice but to stick with that character and work around. Yep, we're doing this. We're definitely doing this. Anyway, there are three core stats for each character. The formulas for these stats are fixed and are pretty easy to understand, but it was tricky to decode since Genshin loves decimals and they love to round numbers off. I'm not a math genius and I can't remember how I passed calculus, but f it, let's start with these formulas. We have three factors for each stat. These are base, percentage, and flat values. HP and defense rely on the same formula, but attack has an additional variable since weapons are in the game. And after six and a half hours of decoding and self-torture, we finally have an answer for the argument of percentage versus flat. And the answer is goddamn simple. It depends on your progress, but you end up balancing them both anyway. <laughs> Let's start with the HP and defense formula. So this one's pretty simple. You only have to separate the percentage and flat values, take the percent variables from artifacts first and get the value of it, add the flats, Add the base stats, which comes from your main character level, and voila! You can determine what's important to race first. The perfect example would be Shangling and Fischl make it easier. Shangling has a higher HP base compared to Fischl despite being both of them at level 60. If we are to pump more percentage variables to Shangling, then we'd get more value out of it because percentage stats rely on your base HP and is absolutely separate from flat stats. In other words, they don't stack like how most of our brains tell us it should. The same thing goes for defense and a good example is Noel. Although you can't really feel the damage reduction since we suspect there's a cap for it and the values are sort of low for now, but you can take advantage of the skill effects. Activating Noel's breastplate and sweeping time can give a ton of additional damage if you tweak your values that favor a healthy balance of defense and attack. Oh, and fun fact though, Fall damage is based on a percentage value, not a flat amount, so it doesn't matter if you have 99,999 HP, it would still hurt to fall. Now let's move on to attack. So one of the most asked questions because <laughs> who the heck gives a damn about HP in defense? <laughs> I do. It seems like not everyone does, so let's get into it. As mentioned, the formula changes due to the addition of weapon stats. So the rules here are basically simple. Your weapon's base attack values adds to your character's base attack, but your weapon's percentage value is derived from the total of your base attack. Make sense? Okay, carry on. Meanwhile, artifacts have a world of their own and will only rely on your total base attack. The percentage values from both artifacts and weapons are unique and do not stack, so keep that in mind when you're tweaking your DPS characters and choosing weapons. Meanwhile, elemental damage bonuses have a different formula which still relies on your overall attack. Pumping elemental percent damage without a high overall attack is basically pointless, so make this a second priority when thinking about how to add more damage to your character. On the contrary, having high enough attack with just even a fair amount of elemental bonus damage can ridiculously have more value. So to answer the argument of percentage versus flat, well, Percentage values outshine flat values in the later stages of the game, such as ascending both your characters and weapons to phase 3 onwards. But in the early stages of the game, flat values contribute much but will scale down as you progress. Note that it is still important to have at least a decent amount of flat attack even if you are at the end game. The safest and most optimal way to go would be to have at least 60% percentage values and 40% flat values. So what about the other stats? <laughs> Let's just have a brief explanation for each to avoid confusion as I reckon you've had enough math for an ARPG game that was absurdly overthought by a masochistic idiot from YouTube, namely me. Yeah. Crit stats don't really need an explanation as to how they function, but based on this forum post from Mihoyo, mad credit Sebastian by the way, critical chance comes with diminishing returns past the 80% mark. I'll have a link to that post down below and as I do not have the means to pump my critical rate that high, so I'm very, very thankful for Blasterian's work. Critical damage seems to be in a good spot, but again, it's a useless stat if you can't even crit to begin with. So always, always, always prioritize critical chance over critical damage. Again, there's no point in critical damage if you can't crit to begin with. 
healing bonus basically increases the amount of heals you receive and follows a similar formula of elemental bonus damage. And I'll have elemental mastery and energy recharge here as a lot of people get confused to its effects. Long story short, elemental mastery does not increase your elemental damage but rather amplifies your elemental interaction bonuses such as vaporize and electrocharged. Remember the Barbara videos circulating around Reddit? Yep, that's the power of vaporize, baby. Energy recharge, on the other hand, only increases the value for each elemental particle drop during combat. Cheesing the stat in a healthy manner allows you to spam low cooldown ultimates like Keqing's uh, Star Wars Sword or having a 100% uptime of Noelle's Sweeping Time, which is <laughs> very amusing. It's a fun stat, but doesn't deserve overkill. Last on the list is Powerful Shield, which is sadly a character-specific stat and is quite expensive to keep up. And when I say it's expensive, it means a lot of RNG is involved. Although I would argue that uh, retracing Bolide set with the well can reward laugh-worthy moments during breastplate plus sweeping time, well, more shields, more damage. Thank you so much for tuning in and we hope this guide helped you out. If you think I missed something, please, please, please comment down below so that we can also help other adventurers know more about Genshin Impact. If you found this useful, please feel free to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to get notified for future content. That's all for now, fellas, and as always, peace, be nice, stay safe, and we'll see you guys next time.